the topic I am going to talk about is, uh, <clears throat> as I already said, a kind of an introductory, a kind of an introductory topic, and uh, in this uh, entrepreneurship uh, uh, complex of topics, this is a kind of an overview, or let's say introduction, to make it to make it clear that we are when we said entrepreneurship, we basically have a kind of a same uh, understanding what entrepreneurship is, and uh, the the content of uh, my presentation is uh, after introduction. We are going. I'm going to to define to talk more about entrepreneurship and all these uh, areas within it. Then uh, about creativity, innovation. Then about the model, how to identify business business opportunity. Uh, we are living in very interesting times. Uh, with a lot of decisions to make, with a lot of dilemmas that we are facing every day. The world has changed enormously from, let's say, 30 years ago. Uh, sometimes we don't even know how fast the changes are happening. Uh, and now, I say in my time, one of the uh, making distinction between the people was what was the, what the music that you were listening to. What the dilemma was, uh, I, I hope you still know who the guys are, <coughs> between Beatles or Rolling Stones. Uh, today, there is a, a lot, a lot uh, of decision dilemmas Every day we are bombarding, bombarded with the, a lot of ideas. We are constantly on, on Google, on Twitter, on Facebook, etc. Uh, well, you can, you can have the, you, you can make your own dilemma, what you're going to use, what, what you know, in which, which site, or for tomorrow we don't even know what the dilemmas will be. We don't even know. So the uncertainty of what's going to happen is huge, and I'm not talking about the world situation, etc. I'm talking on, on a general level. But there are definitely two dilemmas or two decisions to make that nobody can escape. Uh, among all other, but in the terms of entrepreneurship and my topic, is the main decision that you're going to make, that you will have to make, is, am I going to go and search for a job? To ask somebody to employ me so that I can get a job? Or I do my job for my own? So I'm going to create a company, become an entrepreneur. So this is what you're going to, and you will have to make a decision. Or some of you may have already done such such decision. This is a decision to be made on a personal level. Being an entrepreneur is career like any other career. It's a job. It's a job. But it's a job for yourself, with different responsibility, uh, with different rewards than being employed. On a company level, you can have the, the decision, should we innovate or should we not? Should we lead? making new products, or we just fall? Should we be active or should we be reactive? Just wait and what will happen. 
and um, definitely uh, the decision uh, not to innovate is always a decision what is the alternative. Because in the environment, there is a lot, a lot of opportunities. And the summer school is basically trying to, to show this uh, richness of, of the possibility of opportunities and so on. Uh, so let me start with uh, uh, a kind of more uh, term to make to, to be clear on, on the terms that we are using. So what is entrepreneurship? How is it understood? It's not it's not my understanding. It's it's a general understanding of what entrepreneurship is. It is a process how to identify and how to exploit the opportunity. This is one characteristic. Characteristic. The other is that you have to pull together the resources. You need the resources. You need to put, uh, it's not only the money, the resources. Resources are also networks. Resources are knowledge. So it's not always about money. <coughs> Sometimes it is more important that somebody know somebody and you can talk to him. The third characteristic is that you don't have to have your own resources. Okay? You don't have to have already the resources to create a company. One of your tasks as an entrepreneur is to pull together the resources, to get the resources, to get the money, to get friends, to work together, and so on. And it's also a set of critical thinking. Will it work? How to do it? Will somebody buy it? And so on. So this is where the, uh, the system thinking is a good tool to show the reality, and this is where the design engineering shows a lot how to, how to approach a, a problem. And uh, the entrepreneurs, the successful one, okay, the successful one, are basically al always challenging what is unknown. You know, it's very clear today that you know Facebook is such such a simple stuff. You know, it's very simple. But somebody had to, to think about it, to create it, to develop it, and so on. Nobody would predict how the Twitter succeeded and how it still it be succeeded or so on. So there is always something that you ha that you have to think about and uh, uh, basically, the entrepreneurs are always creating the future. If you, if you look back or go into the history, you will see that there was, you know, there was a push moment or pull moment when something new has happened in the market. Either it was the science that created new product, or, uh, or customers just. Uh, basically tell what, what is needed and what is it important. Uh, we need to make a distinction. Not every small business owner would have the entrepreneurial characteristics to create new things, to innovate, etc. So also within theory, uh, entrepreneurship theory, we make, we make distinction. Small business owners or, or uh, entrepreneurs, uh, small business owners basically uh, manage their resources. They would like to make a stable sales and so on. Now in Slovenia, we have like 120 
approximately 120,000 companies. Uh, there is no uh, there is no statistic on on that how many are uh, how many are entrepreneurial how many are not. But if you look around in your environment, you will you will always say, okay, this one is not an innovator. I know it can be a barber shop, it can be whatever, it can be the guy who come to 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 to, to you know uh, repair refrigerator or what. He, he he's not entrepreneurial. He's basically just do a constant job. And the small business uh, owners somehow help to make the economy stable together with the companies, other companies, and then entrepreneurs, they break this piece and bring new, uh, bring new, uh, new comp uh, bring new, new products, uh, uh, and so on. Um, so the, the entrepreneurship is uh, more than just uh, creation of business. You know, there was a, there is a, uh, in 60s, uh, McLeland, uh, has uh, written a book called Achievement Society. And in this Achievement Society, he developed a theory on uh, locus of control. And he said that people approach differently to reality. The internal locus of control and the external locus of control, meaning I will tell an example. I, I'm sure that all of you know people, colleagues, whatever, who are always complaining that somebody else, it's, it's the guilt of somebody else. If they fail the exam, you know, it is because of the professor. If they miss the bus, it is the bus the one who came too early, etc. If they have to wait at the bus station, you know, it, it's, it's the bus, the one, etc. Okay? So these are the, the people with so-called internal locus, external locus of control. You know, everything has happened outside them. And then you have the other type of people who are taking responsibility. Who, who, are, who are taking the responsibility to think about it, etc. And the research that was done uh, has shown that the entrepreneurs have uh, statistically significantly in the group of people with the internal locus of control. The people who are, uh, who are prepared to, to think about the, the reality uh, who are seeking the opportunity, who are taking the risk, uh, and uh, who also have the tendency to push the idea. Now, if you, the, 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 the lectures are here in the business incubator, Tovarna Podiemu, a venture factory. And you now the, the office is over here, uh, they are entrepreneurs, innovative, young entrepreneurs, students, postgrads, so on. Uh, if you will talk to them, uh, you will hear how much is to be done to push the idea to reality. And uh, if you would, you know, pass this uh, this building. Sometimes at one in the morning, two in the morning, you know, the lights will be still on because they're trying to, you know, figure out what's to be done, how to do it. You know, sometimes it happens that I come early in the, in the morning here and people, you know, have eyes like, you know, because they work all day, all night, 
etc. Tu, tu pušdė dėja, tu, 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 tu kam tu reali. So basically this is a mindset. This is not so much about the outside world, it is about the mindset. Am I willing to fight? Do I have the, the high level of aspiration to do the things, to convince people, to, 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 to be able to do it and so on? So this is uh, the way how to, uh, how to run uh, the business in an, uh, in, an innovative, in an innovative manner. Uh, so to, to, uh, to make it clear, when I already will use the word entrepreneurship, then this is basically about searching for opportunity without regard to resources. You don't have to have resources. The resources, you will, you will get the resources from, from somebody that have the resources. This is one of your tasks. That's why, you know, this uh, Saturday, uh, uh, Saturday lecture <coughs> on pitching, how to pitch an idea uh, is uh, kind of important if you if you are going to if you have a serious thought to create your own to create your own company or if you have already created a company uh, most probably you have heard the, the, the expression elevator pitch it's a it's an expression from the Silicon Valley in uh, in the 90s, you know, with all this boom of dot-com companies, there was, a, what was missing was basically all those clever young guys was the, uh, was the money, was the money, and they were, you know, Silicon Valley, Palo Alto, for example, there is a lot of companies uh, they are pro that are providing the, the, the venture capital. The venture capital is uh, is actually uh, maybe it's good, but at the venture uh, uh, topic you will hear about that. But when you have the company, I I, I would say about uh, with the help of the balance sheet. Okay, when you have a company you have on one side there are assets you know there is a there are computers maybe there is a building so this is an asset <coughs> so this is the what you have and then you have the sources where this asset came from yeah so you can have only basically two possibilities either it is owned so this is a capital, or it is a debt. You uh, rented the money, uh, somebody lends you the money, okay? If you need the money, you can go to the bank, and the bank will give you money, and you have to, make, to, to, to give the money back. If you would go to a friend and said, okay, you, you have some money, put your money into my company, the friend will become co-owner of the company and you will increase the capital, okay? The capital is the own source. And there are venture capitalists whose business is basically to become co-owners of the companies to make it very, very simple they invest the money, they put the capital, they don't lend the money. They put the money into the company, I don't know. They said, okay, you can say, okay, I need 200,000 euros, go to venture capital, risk, and he'll say, okay, it's a good, it's a good business, business, I trust you, there's a good team, I will give you 200,000 uh, uh, euros for 
15% share of the company, or for 10% share, or, or for 40% share of the company, and then I will be co-owner and I will help you to grow the company to the certain level, and then I will sell my share. I put into the company 200,000 euros, and I want to get back in three years 300,000 euros. So this is my job, okay? So venture capitalists, they have the money, they invest the money, and so on. Uh, uh, you know those uh, those guys from Prek Muria who have uh, created the company, uh, the the and they uh, um, they grow orchids. Uh, you know, basically all the all the orchids that you buy in the not all there's a lot of them that you buy in the shops came from 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 this company. When the company was created. They interested the venture capital, venture horizontal ventures, and they put the money into it. I don't know how much, but in four years, four years time, the company has really grown big, was successful, and then the owners, the original founders of the company, they bought it back from them for also for a certain, let's say, much bigger amount of money. This is the business of of venture capitalists. And to come back to the pitching idea, to the elevator pitch, uh, in, uh, in uh, this uh, boom of companies in Silicon Valley, there's a lot of young founders who were searching for the money, and they were knocking all the time to the venture capitalist's door you will see how to make a business plan and how to pitch the idea. But the elevator pitch, you will heard a lot about them, is they said, okay, explain me the idea. Make me interesting, in the, so, so I'll be interested in the idea. You have as much time as you can come with me. When I come to the job, you can come with me to the elevator and you have to convince me till I get to the top that that your idea is worth spending my time with you to explain it more into detail. So pitching the idea is about to, to, to convince somebody in a very short short term. So it's not a big word, it's not about speaking a lot, what the product will do, how it is made, what the magic is in it, so, but just to, to make really interested the guy who wants to earn the money that he will, lend you, he will lend you the money. So you have to be capable of getting the resources. This is also the entrepreneurship. So entrepreneurship is not about creating the product, it's about selling the product. Uh, why the entrepreneurship is important? <coughs> because uh, the growth of a national economy is based on the growth of a company, on the companies. Uh, and uh, if you would look at the statistical, uh, statistically at the success of the companies, of the national economies, you'll see that uh, the, uh, uh, the good economies are those economies that they have good companies, that they have good entrepreneurs, capable entrepreneurs, innovative entrepreneurs, and so on. And uh, entrepreneurship creates jobs. Uh, there was a study from David Birch in the 70s uh, that uh, showed that for a period uh, of uh, five years in 80s, it's done for the United States, 
or the net jobs. You know, the people, net jobs are the jobs that are the difference between the, the people who, who, who lost their job and the new jobs. That they were all created by small companies, by small growing companies. And I believe that if you would make the, such a an, uh, such an study now in Slovenia, you will get the same, the same result. So the uh, companies entrepreneurship creates jobs as you know, it's also always a source of new technology, source of new products, source of new services. We always have, as already said, we have two sources. One source is the already established companies that have their, uh, their uh, uh, research development departments. And then you have a big majority of companies that don't innovate. And then you have the new companies that bring up new products and new services. So this is how the, the economy is, uh, is working and how, is, uh, uh, how is it is developing. Uh, the, uh, I already talked about the, the, the different uh, locus of control. The people are, or we are, all of us, are differently oriented towards innovativeness. So are we coming up with new ideas? Are we capable to change the idea into the, innovate, to, to the, to the innovative product or service? Then the risk taking. Are we willing to take risk? Uh, and are we acting proactive? So not to wait that something will happen, but we try that we will make things happen. Okay? There's a, if somebody would be interested in the theoretical part, there's a huge number of studies on entrepreneurial orientation also in Slovenian language and uh, by Slovenian authors and so on. Entrepreneurial, how, how, how the entrepreneurial orientation is connected to the success of a company or the success of the economy and so on. And uh, the entrepreneurship process and within it included identifying of opportunities, the entrepreneurship process to function, to work, you have actually three driving forces. There is no entrepreneurship process without entrepreneur. There must be somebody who's got an idea and who is going to push this idea, to pursue this idea to <coughs> the reality, okay? So this is the entrepreneur. Very often, it is the entrepreneurial team. It is not one person, it is more people. Because of the complexity of the reality, they would need you know, different knowledge, different skills to create a successful, uh, successful venture. There are resources needed, money. Somebody should provide the money. If you create a company, you have to eat. You have to have some source of, of an income. So you have, as I already said, you have two possibilities. Either you have your own money, or somebody will give you the money, which is one, which is one, uh, uh, one need. And you have a different possibilities. Uh, you have your own money. If, if we put aside the bank and the venture capital, uh, you have those <coughs> three Fs, they said. Three Fs, who can provide you money. This is you, OK. But besides you, it's a friends, it's a family, 
and it's fools. Those who believe you that you're good and you're going to make, uh, you're going to make the money. But the majority, to be serious, the majority of, uh, of uh, financing new companies, not only in Slovenia, but basically all over the, the world, is your own resources, family, and then friends, colleagues at the job, and so on. So this is basically. But you and family, family is uh, basically, let's say, a big investor. Very often, it, it's uh, it's uh, kind of also kind of an intangible support. So you create a company and you still live in your parents' house. This is basically one source that you need, one resource. Okay. Uh, if I'm talking about the money, but there are also different, as we already said, different types of uh, of uh, resources resources needed. And, and the third driving force is the opportunity. There must be an opportunity. There must be an unsatisfied need on the market. Somebody has to need your product. Okay? This is not about making fun, creating something. It's about satisfying the market need. Because somebody will have to uh, take out of, the, out of the pocket, have to take the money and give it to a product. So it's a very, very good test. If you're thinking about the product, about service, to ask people around you, would you need something like that? Would you be prepared to pay for it? How much would you pay if you would get such a product, such a service? So this is a first, very, very first test uh, about your entrepreneurial idea. Uh, there was a Canadian professor, uh, Louis Jacques Fillon, who made a PhD dissertation on uh, world successful entrepreneurs. The entrepreneurs who have won different prizes. Entrepreneur of the Year, European Entrepreneur, etc. So they also was, were, were backed by successful companies. Basically, his, uh, his uh, research one on how you develop entrepreneurial vision, which is basically about how to get an idea and how to get this idea to the reality. You have to have a vision. Okay? And then he wrote a book. The book was in French. I don't speak French. Uh, but the, 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 the title of the book was The Entrepreneur, the... the, the uh, permanently talking entrepreneur. Okay, that would be a kind of a, a, a let's say, strange uh, uh, translation. So entrepreneurs that talk constantly. And he said that when you have an idea, you have to, all the time you have to check the idea, to talk about the idea with people, and so on, so that you can get the feedback, so that you can get a better develop and so on. If you would have an, 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 a digital product, whatever it is, then you make a prototypes. You make a prototype, etc. And in this, uh, uh, especially in this digital world, a prototyping is a uh, uh, common method. And you will also hear about prototyping. Uh, I believe that uh, Magister Rus will talk about it, and also you will see it in uh, on the on the job, the prototyping uh, method at the design engineering uh, 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 area of of all the of all the lectures. Uh, and so you have to have you need all three elements, all three pillars which is not enough. There must be 
fit. The entrepreneur has to fit and the team to this certain opportunity. Not everybody. For example, you would have 20 opportunities here and 20 entrepreneurs. There is there should be the right entrepreneur for the right opportunity. You have to accept the opportunity as yours. So, so this is one. And the second, you need different resources. You need different resources if you would develop a digital product or if you, have, if you want to develop a pharmaceutical product. So there must, you need different resources. Okay, money is, uh, you know, money has no color. But you, you need different knowledge, different set of people who will work on that, different technology and so on. So the resources has to be uh, correct and uh, the fit uh, should be uh, the right one. But there are also, there are also gaps. If we're talking about the entrepreneur, you don't have the, all the knowledge, you will ask. Or you will find somebody, if you're an engineer, you will find somebody that has, let's say, economic or marketing knowledge. And you will include him into the team. So to, to break this, uh, to break the, to fill, to fill these gaps. Uh, to, uh, so if we talk about the entrepreneur, uh, these are uh, basically the typical influential characteristics of entrepreneur. I would say that the majority of you would have those need for achievement. So to do something, to achieve something, I already talked about the locus of control. You have to, you, you should be willing to take the risk. If you create a company and go and work for yourself, you have to take the risk that something will wrong, go wrong on the market, that the customer will not pay on time, and so on. Uh, something can go wrong with your product. This is your own risk. But if you go to work for somebody else, this is not your personal risk. But you know the risk of the job is the same. So. Uh, you have to be willing to take the risk. That's, all, that's one of the reasons why so many new companies are created in the age break of uh, 25 to 34. The majority of new companies are, uh, are created by the people who are old between 25 and 34. One of the reasons it is so is because the risk is lower in this age group and people are, are more willing to, 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 to search for new things. They still don't, don't know that it cannot work. You know, when you're older, you just say it can't work. But, uh, but you know, when you're new in the, in the, in the game, you, you look at the problem with new angles, with new eyes, etc. Uh, if in the family, if somebody of the relatives is entrepreneur or was entrepreneur, the 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 uh, the possibility that you are also going, or, or the 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 odds that you will start a business is much higher. So the childhood experience helped to, uh, to convince you somehow to, uh, to uh, start a business. And there is also a lot of a cultural impact. Slovenia is not a really entrepreneurial country. Uh, people are still not very, uh, very in favor of entrepreneurs. If you would ask your parents what to do, should I create a company? Or should I go and work for a bank? They will basically say, "Yeah, well, well, go to the bank. You know, it's a, it's a secure job. Don't go, don't go, or, or go to the, you know, go to the government. There is a lot of agency. They will find a job for you. 
Uh, so, uh, uh, but in some in some uh, 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 societies, for example, United States is a very very entrepreneurial society. It is it is uh, uh, the society such is more is more supportive in the uh, in entrepreneurship. Uh, why should one start business, independence, control, personal satisfaction, financial rewards. We have made some uh, some research. Uh, if I have time uh, at the end, uh, uh, I will uh, tell you something about it. But just in, in uh, this uh, this moment, uh, why uh, uh, in Slovenia people create a company? And the great majority uh, is uh, of, of the new companies is because of the independence and control of one's life. So the money is not the first reason. I want to be independent. I want to be creative. Is one of the leading one of the leading reasons for uh, for uh, getting into the into the business life. Uh, just to, because if we, we are talking about the success, we, uh, we should also understand why the companies fail. You know that every day basis, uh, daily basis, the companies fail. And uh, these are the main reasons. These are the main reasons The first reason is they do not understand the market. You'll hear a lot in uh, uh, this week about the importance, especially in this uh, entrepreneurial panels, but also in design engineering. How important it is to understand the market, lack of planning, particularly financial planning, Lack of managerial skills, uh, lack of capital, because if you if you get a, the money from the bank, I have a I have a colleague who was all his life he was uh, uh, teaching uh, finance. He was also you know, for like thirty years was. Uh, uh, Financial director, director of finance in, in two biggest Slovenian companies. He always, uh, you know, he was always dealing with the money. And he said that the the bank credit is a great thing, great. But they have two two bad sides. First is it costs. You have to pay interest for the money, and second, you have to pay it back. So lack of capital can be a serious, serious uh, reason for failure of the company. I put it here also lack of luck. Sometimes also this. Sometimes also, I just simply don't have luck. You, you made a mistake. Uh, I know sell the sell the products to 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 company that didn't uh, pay you. You work as a subcontractor for the government, for Slovenian government, and the government didn't pay you yet. You work for I don't know for constructor or for Vegrad as a subcontractor. You know they they went bankrupt. What? So just bad luck. Not always, but sometimes it's also bad luck. So it's not always, not always a, a bad entrepreneur. Sometimes it's also the environment that make things uh, uh, go wrong. So it was about about the the. Uh, uh, Entrepreneurs, what about a business opportunity? 
You know, we can, we can be very, very uh, theoretical about business opportunities, but at the end, the business opportunity is anything, anything that provides you positive cash flow. Okay? And that there is little or no risk. This is a business opportunity. So that's why this blue ocean strategy is good. You know, because it makes you think about what can, what can be found on the market that will provide me positive cash flow. Uh, how many of you are engineers here? Okay. One, two, three. Okay. I thought that there would be more. But you know, you know with, with all the respect to engineers, but you know, on, on average, engineers are very often too, too engaged into the product, how to make it, how should it function, etc. cetera. Uh, that's why the success, the, the companies that are successful, they also <coughs> include also somebody with the marketing knowledge. Somebody that is capable uh, to to uh, to see the the uh, gaps in the market, to see the niches in the market, etc. So business opportunity. Uh, what about creativity and innovation? There's there's also a lot of. Uh, talking about the creativity, about innovation. There is a lot of methods how to stimulate creativity, you know, how to you know, make different types of brainstorming, how to uh, uh, select which idea is good and so on. There's, there, is a, there is a huge literature, also very practical, on, on uh, stimulating uh, the creativity. But at the end, it is the process of generating new ideas. This is the process. How to come to new, to new ideas. But these new ideas are just ideas. There's a huge, you can have the thousand ideas per day. Uh, if you are you know, willing to think, if you play, if you play with your mind, just try, what, what can be new? You can create a lot of them. But this is just a very, very raw, very, very raw material. And then, to come to an innovation, you have to select. There is also, there is also a program I, I was I was in a, in a project that was the name the idea machine. The idea machine was a kind of a, a fancy name for a project. How to create as many ideas as possible, as many as many. But at the end, you have a bunch of ideas, and now what to do with them? So you also need a selection criteria. And within this selection criteria, you would come to an, it's not written here, to an invention. So to something that is workable, and from here, you will come to innovation. By definition, innovation is anything that brings, that succeeded on the market. So sometimes uh, you can hear that uh, also in also in the newspapers some innovator who says I created such an excellent something but nobody's interested I went to the, somebody should buy my product but I cannot find nobody that would be interested in product so this is basically not an innovation it's an invention Innovation has to get a reply from the market. So, 
innovation is to apply to apply these new ideas to the market. No? Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of sources of new sources of new idea. You know, it just like came out of nowhere. They said that click, this is what I have figured out. Or is by accident. I don't know, penicillin was, you know, made by accident. Uh, post-it notes. You know the story of post-it notes? We are all using this small yellow piece of paper that you put some message in, it, okay? There was a company, 3M. 3M is an American company uh, who basically has created uh, uh, how is it called? Mm. You know, if, if you'd like to sharpen a knife, what do you need? How, how, what was the English word? I did not sharpen it, but you know, on a classical way. You know, it is not a machine to do it, but you know to, to do it. And this company uh, has uh, basically producing uh, those uh, products. And then, uh, you know, from the mine, uh, the mine, you know, they, they, they had to, to get the, uh, the, uh, the stone, the stone. You know, there was not a lot of them. They were missing. And so they started to, to make, uh, I'm saying Slovenia, because there's a lot of Slovenians here, uh, Brusni Papir, okay? Uh, but this was in 20s. In 20s, and then in 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 in, in, in uh, by the end of 60s or the in, it was in the 70s, one engineer uh, had the uh, responsibility to create a very strong glue. You know, he he made a lot of different uh, experiments to come out with a really really strong glue. But at the end, you know, it was just something. You know, it was a glue, but you know, when you 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 you, you wanted to, to, to fix it, you know, just just stay there, but it was not definitely not a strong one. And then they had it; they didn't throw it away, and basically they had this invention. Uh, they just put it away, and then some five years later, there was another engineer who was singing in a church choir. Uh, and they have this songbook in the church, and you know, for each uh, each uh, uh, Saturday or Sunday, you know, there was a different repertoire of of these songs. And he put the you know the small pieces of paper into the book, you know, to 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 know wh which songs are to be you know like we do it in the in the book we are reading. Just put something in. But he, he said, I had a problem because, you know, when I opened the, the, the song book, you know, these small pieces of paper has fallen out. I didn't know. And then he uh, figured out that the, the, the research uh, uh, department has developed a glue that is actually something in between. And so he just, you know, uh, put this glue on those pieces piece of paper and put it in. And so, you know, the colleagues have seen, the others have seen, and so that the story of basically post-it notes started. And today, you know, in one year or two years, you know, this was the huge, huge, huge success. Then the other, the other also began to do the same product. So basically, it was by, created by accidents, okay? And also penicillin was actually, you know, this bacteria, whatever it is, was actually invented some 10 years, 10 years ago already. But then, you know, Fleming have seen that, you know, he was doing something with the funguses. And then, uh, you know, in his laboratory, when this uh, penicillin uh, 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 
component was there was no there was no bacteria around. So he saw that somebody is you know killing all the bacteria and so that you know the the story of great, great, great success. Penicillin is one of the most successful products uh, worldwide. Uh, so on. So there's a there's a lot, a lot of uh, of sources that uh, can uh, that new ideas can can come from. Uh, there are also some innovation myths. One is that only new companies uh, generate new products. It's not true. You have a huge companies that come up with a lot of new ideas. Or that uh, uh, innovation is something that you can do part time. Innovation is also process. There's a lot, a lot of literature on innovation process. How to generate the idea, how to how to come up with this idea. Uh, one of the very big mistakes is that we know what a customer needs. So we don't want to ask the customer, I know what they need. Sometimes it's true. But very often it is it is wrong. And wrong is also that the market knowledge, only specialists have market knowledge. We have a lot of people who know, who know the market, etc. Uh, to follow the new idea, uh, one has to act entrepreneurially, okay? So it is not about forming the company in the first place. It is about acting entrepreneurially. And to make it easier, uh, you know, to remember, maybe better, imagine that this is a pyramid. And each side of the pyramid has one characteristic. So that the entrepreneur is four-dimensional. Maybe this is easy. Four-dimensional. First is dream. You have to have an idea what you want to do. Or what would you like to do. It's not a daydreaming. It's a serious thinking about the position that you would like to achieve at the market. So this is dreaming. You have to have an idea, you have to think, you have to enjoy in your thinking what's going to happen, what can be. So this is dreaming. You have to have a vision. I have already talked about the vision. You have to have the vision, what, what to do. And then you have to do it. Okay? You have to do it. You have to know how to do it. Okay? So it's not enough to have a dream. You have to know how to follow, to follow this vision, how to create a company, how to create a product, etc. And you have to have the courage to do it. Have to have the courage. This is one of the reasons why the younger people are more, more often creating new companies. Because that there's a theory on uh, so-called occupational theory. When you want to create a company, you have to weigh. What are the possibilities? Should I stay? For example, if you have a job, should I stay at the job or should I create a company? And you have to evaluate so-called opportunity costs. If I stay on a certain job or if I am unemployed or if I 
uh, form a company. And so, for example, uh, I am a professor here at the university. Uh, I would say it's a very secure job, hopefully, if the minister will not make some new ideas. But basically, you know, it's a, it's a, uh, you know, being a full professor uh, at my age uh, uh, is basically quite a secure to keep the to keep the employment. And for example, I would come home in the evening and say, "Hey, I decided to have a company. I have quit the job." So uh, next uh, next month there will be no salary. Well, we'll manage how to do it, you know. And you know, we'll, for some two years, you know, we have to be, you know, modest, etc. You know, it's just a fun. I would like to do it. So for me to start a company with the all engagement is quite different. This uh, uh, this approach is different. So if you go or or there are also a lot of middle middle possibilities that you can do it. But you have to have the courage to do it. And when you create a company you have to delegate. You don't possess all the knowledge. You have to delegate some of the activities to other, to other specialists, to those people who would be capable, capable of do the, the job. And when having the company, two simultaneous activities must be performed. One is to have a product. You have to build a product, <clears throat> to develop a product. This is one. This is why you have created a company, to make a product. But on the same time, you also have to create the machinery producing this product. You have to create the organization. Okay? If you're going to have employed people, you have to tell them what to do, how to do, to come on the job, what are their responsibility, and so on. You have to make the organization. This is your second job. And you have to make it simultaneously, at the same time, developing the product and developing the organization. Okay? Especially when the company is growing. And again, uh, some people are very capable of building the product, but make mistakes in the organizational uh, part of the business, <coughs> or vice versa. They are very skilled organizational organizers, but they have the product. This is what we we see. Uh, you know, Mate and me, we teach uh, entrepreneurship at the Faculty of Business Economics. And when they make, uh, uh, when they make uh, uh, business plans, one of their uh, responsibility in the class, entrepreneurship class, is to make a business plan. They create a good business plan uh, with a bad product. Because they, um, very often, they don't have the right idea, the, the, the viable idea for a viable product. This is where uh, uh, we would like to create more complementary teams. You know that 
you know, technical students who basically have ideas for product would uh, merge, would cooperate with economics, marketing stu students, you know, to make a team that would be capable of doing both jobs, building the product and building the organization. about the, the third, uh, the third uh, frame uh, element, which is the opportunity. Um, the opportunity is basically always in time, not in space. I, yes, it is also in space. But what is important is in time. Yeah. So there is a certain window of opportunity in which you can earn the money. Uh, it's pretty late to start to develop something like windows. <coughs> but if we would do it in 90s, that would be great opportunity. Okay? Uh, or, uh, you know, everybody is saying, oh, we have no Facebook, you know. Yeah, it's, it's easy for MySpace or something like that. But, you know, there is a, there is a certain, <coughs> certain time when you can get the market. Because later on, the market is saturated. There are already such products in the market. Sorry came late to the party. <coughs> all, the, all the seats are taken. You have to come up with something else. Okay? So that is imp important to know, <coughs> to know the, the time frame within which you can, you can uh, exploit the opportunity. Okay? There's a lot. There's a lot of stories about uh, about uh, missing the the time frame. About uh, not uh, getting, uh, you know, on time, on the market. Maybe the most famous one is uh, one by Steve Jobs. Uh, you know that Steve Jobs was after successfully uh, running the Apple, he, uh, uh, he was actually fired from the company. And then when he created the next company, uh, next company producing, a, they should produce a, basically a software for, for, for Simulations to do uh, to do uh, uh, to do. Uh, they target the <coughs> the um, basically secondary schools and uh, universities because uh, you know especially secondary schools uh, you cannot make a lab a complicated lab for some chemical uh, experiments and so on but you can make a a software to do the experiments. And they have created the company, the company has developed in the product and so on. They were, you know, just at the, at the brink of put it into the, into the market. And then uh, it, was, uh, it was planned that they should get to the market at on the beginning of the summer. Because at that time, the, 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 at that time, the U.S. government was uh, providing the money for secondary schools to, to get all the equipment. So they, they were focused to get the, 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 the computers on time, on the market, 
so that the, 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 that the schools will see the computers, that they will be great, that they would like to buy those computers. But they missed. They missed for about two or three months. By missing that, they basically lost the whole year. And next, it took quite a lot of time. But they, basically, they, they survived by, you know, they, etc. But, you know, if you miss the time frame, you have to know that you have to make the money to work. You know, you have to, if, if, you, if you earn, if you get the capital, the working capital, you have to pay the salaries, you have to buy products, etc. And to wait for the money to come from the, uh, from the customers, it takes time. So this uh, uh, time frame opportunity is extremely, is extremely important and should be, should be very carefully planned. Uh, there are two experts. One is, you know, Richard Branson, Virgin Airline, Virgin Records. I don't know what his <coughs> business is now, but uh, uh, Virgin Records, if he was sold them, I know that. But the Virgin uh, Airline. Uh, is still, still existing. Richard Branson uh, started basically as entrepreneur in the age of 15. In his secondary school, he was selling, creating and selling some school newspapers. And then he successfully, at the age of 21 and 22, he bought uh, six pistols. Six Pistols were a very successful, uh, like more punk band. And he bought the rights, uh, rights uh, that they were, you know, producing for him, the music, etc. And so he, he developed the, he developed the quite successful businesses. And, uh, his advice is you have to make sure that there's a gap in the market. So that there is opportunity. Somebody must be missing at the market. So if you're going to, to create a company, do constantly think about what is the problem? What problem can I solve? Okay? So the gap in the market. And the John Mullins, who have created <coughs> quite a few companies, some of them are successful, some of them were not. Uh, he is currently entrepreneur and also professor at London Business School. Uh, and is also a venture capitalist. And his uh, advice is, or his experience is uh, uh, that you are concentrating on the product. He used the word, fall in love with the product. So you, you're working on the product, you really like it, and you can't bear the thought that it would not be successful. And you think, okay, I'll make it a little better. I will change this, I'll make it a little better, make it different. And you, and you spend a lot of time on developing the market instead of thinking about the customer and about the problem. Maybe the problem is not what you're going to, s what you're producing. Maybe the problem is a little different. So, the pain that you're solving, okay, have to have an insight. What is wrong that I could I could sell, I, I could, and then, and then, uh, and start to solve the problem, to gather resources, and so on. And uh, to gather resources. Hmm. You see these guys? <laughs> Not really something that you could trust in, you know, in the first, at the first sight. 
But if, if you would put the money into them, that would be great. That would be really great. This is the guy. Seventy-eight. First group of Microsoft. Uh, they had the capability to see what is missing at the market. Uh, because they were already doing a lot of a lot of work in the in the area. And uh, to to find to come from the idea to the market, we have to make the business plan. The business plan is uh, your road map, your map to the market. You think about it, how you're going to do it. You'll you, you, you have um, basically one afternoon, I would believe, maybe the whole day on business planning. Uh, but, uh, so this is the, you know, this is basically the process. Idea, develop, plan resources, launch, manage, this is the entrepreneurship process. We are concentrating on this first part, on how to, how to start to, to develop, how to start to develop the, the business plan. And uh, this is also where uh, the design thinking comes into the first to the first row is that it is the three crucial questions you have to ask. The first question is about the technology. Well, it doesn't matter where you start. But the first one is, I'll talk about the first. Can we make it? Are we capable to create such a product? Can you make it? The second question is, will somebody buy it? Will somebody buy it? So if the first question is about technology, then the other question is about the customers. What the customer wants, what you're going to, to do with that. And uh, the third is about economics. Will this product provide sustainable profit? Sustainable profit. So not just one week profit or one month, one year, but sustainable. So uh, in uh, design thinking, in a broad sense, in systemic thinking about the market, all these three are linked to create the innovation. So in the middle is the creation, is the, is the innovation. We talk first about the possibility, <laughs> what is possible, what can be done. About desirability. Do people really want that? Would they like to buy it? Would they like to use it? And the third area is viability. Can it survive? Uh, so to come to an innovation, uh, because this is about from idea to innovation. So to come to an innovation, we have to take into account these three areas, 
uh, and uh, to keep in mind to keep in mind that not every idea is business opportunity this is first and the second is not every business opportunity is successful business You can have an idea, you can develop the product, you can create a company, the company will, will make products, they will earn some money, but it doesn't mean that it's going to be successful. So it's not automatically. Uh, so we need to recognize which opportunity is the one that will provide not only business, but successful business. You have to invest a lot of efforts, also resources, into an idea, into the development of idea. And it's better that it's a good idea. Okay. The, so you will not work like a month, a year, two years, in the area that at the end will not bring. We, we very often talk about the creating new ideas, etc., etc. Sometimes I believe that we should also speak about the killing the ideas. How to kill an idea. Or to put it aside, not to use it, because it's not, it's not viable. And you will, uh, you will uh, get, uh, by my colleagues uh, in the entrepreneurial area, uh, the whole process based on business planning, how to, get to the success, how to get to the business that could be successful. Uh, in the next 15 minutes or something, I'm going to talk about phase before the business planning or you know the first phase of uh, first phases of, of business planning uh, I will base uh, my uh, uh, presentation in this part on John Mullins very often used model of uh, seven domains of attractive opportunity uh, which is trying to tell how can entrepreneurs access the market opportunity so to see is this attractive or or not and those of you who would be interested in that um, there is a book. Um, you can uh, you can also download it. Uh, Matei will uh, go into more to detail the, to the to the those handbooks that Matei and me have developed for the business planning. Uh, this one is on uh, spotting the the, the attractive attractive opportunity. So what is to be done before writing a business plan? Okay, this is one phase before. Um, and you can, uh, you can, uh, I'm sure that you can find some PDF uh, uh, part of the book on Google somewhere. <laughs> uh, it is not, uh, no, you know, you know that PDFs are free. If you if you know how to get into it, <laughs> uh, mm. three critical considerations should be done. The first one is to make a distinction <coughs> between the market and the industry. So what is market and what is the industry? Uh, second, 
to make a distinction between macro level and micro level. And the third one is the question about the compatibility of entrepreneurial, <coughs> entrepreneurial team. So let's look first at the distinction between uh, market and uh, industry. This is the first distinction. So this is the, I'm going to show this with the help of Moulin's uh, matrix. Uh, so let's talk about, uh, is it an attractive market? And is it an attractive industry? And uh, so, uh, what is the market? Let's let make a, a, a short definition. What is the market? Market is a group of customers, a group of customers who has the willingness and ability. You know, I can wish the product, I don't have the money. So I'm not, the, I'm not really the customer. I'm not really the customer. So have the willingness and ability to buy product so that they can satisfy their needs. Okay? So markets are always consisting of buyers, not products. You can have the product, but you don't have a buyer. So you don't have a market. There is no market. Market needs a buyer. Markets are buyers. Uh, for example, you have a market for, you know, mid-time lunches or for snacks for business people. If you work from 8 to 4, you have to have a lunch in between. So there's a market. There's a market. <coughs> All business people that go for lunch and they will have a lunch during their, during their work day. Who is ser serving such a market? You have different possibilities. So you can have pizza. You can have, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, sandwiches. You can have, you can have lunches, etc. But the market are those people, and the industry is the group of organizations that offer the products. So that are similar or close substitutes. What is the substitute? The substitute is a product that is near the satisfying, near in the same way the, 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 the need. So I, I, I am, uh, you know, I'm drinking here uh, Yana, but you know, what, uh, let's say almost total substitute is uh, Zala. So I can, this, this is the substitute. Well, it's not substitute Yana and uh, Lash Kupiva, or uh, I don't know, or vodka in Czechoslovakia. There's something wrong, you know, they have a prohibition now. So if you would go to the Czech, Czech Republic uh, these days, all you can get is uh, wine and beer. And there, there, are, there are signs, no, we sell no alcohol, only wine and beer. <laughs> so, because wine and beer is a food. Uh, industries <coughs> consist of sellers. So the one who is selling the product that would satisfy this market. So if you are uh, selling pizzas for people, uh, for people who go for lunch, then it's not only your competitor, it's not only the other pizza guys, 
but also, you know, sandwich shops, uh, small restaurants who are providing the, the workday meal and so on. So the in industry market can be, can be uh, from, uh, from different uh, uh, buyers and the industry from different sellers. So if we say that snack market, they are not only producers that serve, uh, the, serve the market, they're also distributors. You have to distribute the product to the buyer. So if you look at the market, you will see that there are different ways how to satisfy the market and even more importantly, different possibilities to make money on this market. You can, you can make the money by distributing, by bringing meals to offices and earn the money. So you don't, you, you satisfy the need but you don't produce the market, you don't produce the, the good in a way that you would manufacture it. So this is a distinction you should bear in mind between market and industry. Next one, distinction that I mentioned is between micro and macro. Uh, we, we speak about the attractiveness of the opportunity. To the first question, uh, is, sorry, micro and macro, uh, the on the macro level, speaking about the market, attractiveness of market is number of customers in the market. If you have five people who are willing, if all the people bring their, their lunches from home and you have only five people who are willing to eat outside or, or from outsiders, then it's really not the market. There's a need, but you know it's not it's not a really viable market, then this is the money that is spent. Okay? How much money aggrega is aggregated, as, 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 uh, as uh, jointly is spent on this market so that you can sh see how big share you can get for you. <coughs> and the number of units. How many units is it? This is also something that you will have to know when you will make the business plan. Some of those questions, or majority of them, also in the in the making the business plan. Uh, but you have to think about the market and about the universe, about the, the industry. So this is the macro, the macro level. Uh, about the market. So you have on the market you have to think from the from the broader perspective and you have to think about the, uh, the about the company perspective. Uh, so at the micro level is you are now looking if you stay with this uh, uh, workday snacks market, you are now looking for the opportunity how to enter. You can't. You, you don't know how to make pizzas. Uh, then you think, what can I do? What can I do? Maybe I can make for them uh, the like uh, I don't know uh, uh, kind of uh, application, smartphone application that will at you know at ten in the in the morning will I don't know. We give them an, an SMS, you know, I know that you are, you are vegetarian. Today, they are having, you know, those vegetarian meals in these restaurants. And you charge the restaurants because you're providing them information and so on. 
So there are different ways to enter the market for, for a certain product. <coughs> you just have to think about the customer, what is their, what is their pain. Uh, so what you can do, better, faster, cheaper, uh, whatever. Uh, at the micro level, you have to know how large is the market, uh, uh, will you, which is uh, more long term, if I enter this market, you know, is, is it good from an ev evolutionary, from the development point of view, if I enter the market, develop a certain skill, a certain expertise, can I use this expertise somewhere else? Okay, in economics, we would say that you would that you would obtain a kind of economics of scope, economics of scale. So if I know this, where else I can use this, this knowledge? Okay? If I have developed such excellent software for providing information for the snacks, where can I use it? And then you can see, okay, there's a lot of, a lot of possibilities how to use it. So you have to think it on the, on the micro level. And uh, in this, uh, in this uh, micro, macro, micro, macro distinction, you have to also, I'm sorry, it's so much on one, uh, on one slide, you also think about the industry. Is the industry attractive? And for the attractiveness of industry, you that is usually used Porter's five forces model. I'm not going into detail, <laughs> but uh, um, I will uh, most probably, I'm, I can provide you with, uh, with uh, hand, handouts, I believe. I don't know, what, I don't know what's, the, what's the game. <laughs> if it's normal, if, if it's, you know, if it's, uh, if the people will provide it, I will provide it. Uh, but you can you can look in any in any strategic book, strategic management book, in whatever book you will you will you will see a lot about the 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 Porter model. Porter model is actually you have the competitive market, and then there is a, a, a who will who can enter the market. Who can enter the market? So there's a threat of entry. If this is an attractive market, then most probably other companies would like to get into the market. Buyer power, it's not about the money, it's about the possibility that the buyer is leading the market. If there is only one buyer at the market, you become very dependent on this buyer. If you sell only to one company, then you are very vulnerable. You can get easily hurt. And, uh, and the buyer can always say, sorry, I cannot buy on this price. You will have to lower the price if you want to, to sell me. So the buyer's power, you have to estimate you have to estimate the supplier power. If you have a product that is that is you also use some suppliers, then you would have to think. You have to look at the threat of substitutes and all about all competition. So this is a kind of a model that says, okay, you can enter this industry, but hey, this industry is not really attractive, or is very attractive because there is nothing. You have to you have to think about it on the macro level. On the micro level are things like uh, proprietary elements. Uh, is it something that you can uh, that you can patent, or is something that is already patented, and so on? Uh, is there uh, a kind of a superior organizational processes that I have to develop, or superior resources, special resources I need, and so on? And always. And I said always, is there a viable business model? You will also hear a lot on business models. 
not so much in, in, in this uh, summer school, but you know business model, there are books on business models also, you can get a lot on the, on the internet. But basically business model is always describing how you will make the income. How to make the revenue, how to get customers, how to retain the customers and so on, how to keep the customers. Uh, what about operating cash cycle? Operating cash cycle simply means if I have to buy different inputs and pay them today. I pay them today. But then I have like five days to produce the product and to distribute it and the customer will pay me in 90 days, then I have a serious problem. So you can do it differently. You can talk to your buy, to your seller, you know, to, to the inputs provider and say, okay, deliver me the goods, I will pay in 90 days, then you make very quick the process of producing, then you sell it, and you say to the, uh, to the buyer, yes, but you will pay me in two weeks. So you can, you can uh, turn like two or three productive cycles is that basically with the money of the of the provider of the input provider? So this is a kind of a when operating, it's a it's an important important consideration. Um, and you are having then also the consideration of the team. Uh, is do I have the correct team? Is it this team the right one for the this market? Uh, and there are the question: So can entrepreneurial team deliver? Is it good enough that he'll be able to satisfy? this need of the market. So there is a uh, talk about the mission, personal aspiration, risk propensity, and so on. Does it fit to the opportunity? What I have already, already said. Uh, does it have the industry knowledge? Does it have the know-how? And does, uh, is it capable of providing critical success factors. Critical success factors are basically factors that are, that are critical for the success of a company. If you are going, going to make uh, you know, clothes, then most probably a good designer is a critical knowledge that you would have in the company, you need in the company. So a critical success comes. Uh, if you are producing uh, the beer, then there are di different, uh, uh, different uh, success factors. So you have to figure out what is your success, uh, success uh, factors are, and you have to have a mutual incentive. And the knowledge of the whole value chain. If you're going to create a company, then, and you would need a, uh, an entrepreneurial team you have to think about who will be the right person to fill up a certain, a certain position. Uh, you know those guys? Who do you think this is? Michael Jordan. Rudolf Nureyev, famous ballet dancer, Itzhak Perlman, one of the greatest living violinists. Come on. 
Pablo Picasso. I already showed Richard Branson. Already showed Beatles. Okay, so so not to not to make it too heavy. What they have in common? What they have in common? They have in common something that we usually call 10,000 hours rule. 10,000 hour rule means simply that you have to make it many, many, many times to become a real master in your area. Uh, okay, let's go with Beatles. Uh, I don't have time for all of them, but you know, if you start with Beatles, Beatles have played, you know, as you know, at the beginning when they played in Hamburg. In uh, you know, there was a there was a restaurant or bar or disco, whatever we call it today. And they have played. Uh, they said that they played every day, sometimes eight hours a day for like five, four or five years before they returned to the UK and started their basically career as the Beatles. Uh, what we know about them. So they basically, they definitely made 10,000 hours of playing to become, to become good. You know, there is a, there is a great story of, of Pablo Picasso who was known that he never, never, what he had done, he never wanted to write to the pigeons. He didn't want to, 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 uh, to paint the legs. You know, the, I call it called legs, on the pigeons. They asked him why, and he said that his father was also the painter, uh, and he, he painted a lot of birds because but he was old, and when he was old, he couldn't see very well so the, the young Pablo Picasso has to make all the small details on the on the pictures, etc. So those are the guys who really started as a as a very young and have developed certain skills. We could put there Bill Gates. Bill Gates has started to program at the age of 12, 13, and so on. Uh, why uh, why have I uh, put this uh, uh, this uh, picture at the end because I believe it's a, it's a great great way if you think about the, the entrepreneurial career is to start it today because the business that you're going to start today can fail it also can fail the next business but you will get the necessary skills, the necessary experience. And if you look today at the very successful entrepreneurs, you will see that their businesses today are very, very different than their businesses, their businesses in the past. So this is also connected to the what, uh, what is the, the consideration of the team. Try to get into the team people who have some experience in some area. I don't mean jobs, but I mean that they have been in this area before. Uh, you know, this is the old Zen saying, practice makes the master, if master makes the practice. You cannot become master without, without practicing. And this is the end of my speak today. Thank you so much. If there are questions, we will see. I'll be here uh, basically the whole week. Not here, but you know, see each other. If there are any, any questions, I'd be glad to answer. <laughs> basically, not now, because I know they, they wait, you're waiting for the coffee. And there's a very short break. 15 minutes. So uh, you can have a question. I mean, it's okay. But, uh, basically, I don't want to keep you here. Okay. Thank you very much.